What I like to do is sneak in as quietly as possible under the cover of darkness. Get organized, but then sit back and relax and start taking in the different sounds or just the quietness. There's a rare beauty in just that silence of being out in a wild place and knowing that you're the only individual out there at that time of day. And you're now gonna witness the courtship display of the, of the Gunnison sage grouse. The Gunnison sage grouse is very similar to the greater sage grouse. We didn't realize that the Gunnison sage grouse was different than sage grouse outside of the basin until about 1995 when Dr. Jessica Young and, and Clay Braun noticed some differences in the Gunnison sage grouse compared to sage grouse outside the basin. Behavior, the strutting of the males, the calls were different. The body size of the Gunnison sage grouse is about a third smaller than the graders. The Gunnison sage grouse population was a lot larger historically. In the 1970s and 80s, we likely had tens of thousands. But over time, we noted that the population was declining. And today, you know, on average, we have around 5,000. Quite often when you're sitting there in the dark, you'll have the birds leave their roof sites and fly directly over you. It almost sounds like a jet fighter you know, whistling right overhead. And then you have that male land on the leck and you have, you know, you hear the flaps of their wings and almost immediately those males will start booming. Uh, you know, kunk, kunk. Kunk, kunk, kunk. The lek is the breeding grounds or the strutting grounds of sage grouse. So the males are trying to win the hearts of the females. The lek counts, it's really the, the cheapest and easiest way that we have of monitoring a population. It's pretty simple, it's just the total number of males and females that I see for that lek. That's the population data that we use to estimate what the overall population is. With the decline of the Gunnison sage grouse, we need to keep close tabs of what you know the population is doing. Just recently, it was in November of 2014, Fish and Wildlife Service made the decision to list the Gunnison sage grouse as a threatened species. On one side of the issue, we have agricultural producers that are worried about additional land use restrictions that may hinder their livelihoods. On the other side of the issue, we have these environmental groups that are you know, worried that this species could go extinct. If we weren't going out each spring and, and collecting this data, we wouldn't be making informed decisions on our management. You know, that data is all considered by the service in their listing decision. If that population is decreasing, you know, we want to identify what those limiting factors are. What are the threats? You start to hear folks, you know, commuting into work, going down the road in their car. Sometimes it's a school bus. Other times it might be a tractor coming out to feed the cattle. It's the sounds of humans. The human world wake up and come alive. And typically once you start to hear those sounds, that's when the sage grouse is done for the day. 